Hello and welcome to the I, Your English News Bulletin. I'm Esther. These are the headlines. Myanmar's National Unity Government on Tuesday launched People's Defensive War against the country's military, which seized power in a coup on February 1st. Eight samples from close contacts of a 12-year-old boy who died of the Nipah virus on Sunday tested negative on Tuesday, said Health Minister Veena George in Kozekode. The Indian Commercial Pilots Association accused the government's Air India of actively discriminating against women pilots in a letter written to Air India Managing Director Rajiv Bansal on Monday. Now for the news in details. Myanmar's National Unity Government, NUG, on Tuesday launched People's Defensive War against the country's military, which seized power in a coup on February 1st. Asila, acting president of NUG formed by deposed legislators, made the announcement in a video posted on Facebook. With the responsibility to protect the life and properties of the people, the National Unity Government has launched a people's defensive war against the military junta, Al Jazeera, quoted Lashila as saying. As this is a public revolution, all the citizens within entire Myanmar revolt against the rule of the military terrorists led by Ming Ong Hyang in every corner of the country, he added. In his video message, Lashila accused the military of committing war crimes and called on ethnic groups to immediately attack the military, Al Jazeera reported. Lashila also urged military-appointed bureaucrats to resign from the government and called on the border guards and soldiers to join with the people and attack the people's enemy. From today onwards, all the civil servants under the military council, the NUG warns and forbids them from going to office, he said. The NUG will remove Myung Ong Liang and uproot dictatorship from Myanmar for good and be able to establish a peaceful federal democratic union that fully safeguards equality and is long aspired by all the citizens, he said. According to NHK World Reports, Myanmar's military junta earlier designated the national unity government as a terrorist group. Eight samples from close contacts of a 12-year-old boy who died of the Nipah virus on Sunday tested negative on Tuesday, said Health Minister Vina George in Kozegore, north of Kerala, adding that five more results are expected by the evening from the National Institute of Virology. The minister said the health department is observing all 251 contacts of the boy who died of the virus. 54 among them are in the high-risk category. The government has also suspended the ongoing COVID-19 vaccination drive in Kozegore and its outskirts in view of the new threat. Efforts are on to trace the source of infection and experts have recovered half-eaten rambutan fruits from the boy's house. They have also found a fruit bat habitat near their house, the minister said, adding a team from the National Institute of High Security Animal Diseases Laboratory from Bhopal will be in the city soon. Fruit bats are considered to be main carriers and reservoirs of the virus. The Indian Commercial Pilots Association accused the government's Air India of actively discriminating against women pilots in a letter written to Air India Managing Director Rajiv Bansal on Monday. In the letter, the association said that the upgradation list excluded the names or misspelled the names of few women pilots who took maternity leaves, thereby amounting to a denial of due service benefits like leave travel concession and adversely affecting the seniority. It is reiterated that the present actions of Air India amount to complete unauthorized transgression vis-à-vis -vis the constitutionally protected rights of its female pilot workforce and are therefore unconstitutional, illegal, arbitrary and contrary to the judicial procurements on this issue, the letter said. The letter said that such discrimination has adversely affected the morale and dignity of the said women pilots and called on Air India to restore their rightful seniority. According to an extant policy of Air India, women pilots are compulsorily taken off all flight duties when they report their pregnancy. The said pilot is then shifted to desk duty with full pay excluding flying allowance, performance incentives and mobile phone allowance. The Pilots Association said this is a violation of the woman pilot's right to equality and dignity. The same is also insulting to a woman pilot and almost makes 
out pregnancy as if it is a stigma or a negative marker which makes the said woman pilot unfit or not qualified or entitled to discharge her duties ably shoulder to shoulder with her male counterparts, the letter added. Citing a Delhi High Court verdict, the association said that any form of pregnancy-related discrimination against expecting women professionals is violative of the fundamental rights under Article 14, 15, 16, 19 and 21 of the Constitution and is thus entirely non-permissible by law. Maternity Benefit Act 1961 Act governs the condition of service of women employees on maternity leave. Maternity Benefit Amendment Act 2017 provides for the rights of a pregnant employee and attempts to ensure that such employees do not have to face any kind of discrimination during the pregnancy. An Air India spokesperson said that Air India won't comment on such internal matters. Woka District Nationalist Democratic Progressive Party held a consultative meeting at its office, Woka Town, today. During the meeting, General Secretary NDPP and Convener CEB, team in charge NDPP Woka region, TL Mary in his short speech said that a good follower is a good leader. Politics is a number game where he called the party workers to strengthen and work for the upliftment of the party functioning. Renbo Mokikon, NDPP General Secretary and CEB said that through consultative meetings, the party workers came to know of each other's duties and responsibilities. He also said that party workers are the pillars of the party where he called them to work vigorously. Renbio Yanthan, Secretary NDPP and CEB called the party workers to be active and let people identify them. He called them to wake up from slumber and rededicate themselves to work for the party. He appreciated the leadership of Nifurio, the Chief Minister of Nagaland for having vision and leading the people of Nagaland. Montang Patan, Secretary NDPP and CEB said that the Woka region has dynamic party workers where ex-candidates are involved in the significant party, which is national in outlook and regional in nature. He opined the idea of strengthening the grassroots by visiting all the four assembly constituencies in Woka district. Meanwhile, an open discussion and agendas were deliberated during the meeting where the following resolutions were adopted. Firstly, the unit appreciated and welcomed the decision on forming the Nagaland United Government and reaffirmed support for an early, honourable, acceptable and inclusive solution for the ongoing Naga political issue. Secondly, they reiterated their commitment to work towards strengthening the party at the grassroots in the Assembly constituencies in Woka district. Further, they appreciated and expressed wholehearted confidence and extended invigorated support to Nifurio, Chingwang Konyak, President NDPP, and all NDPP legislators. Lastly, the NDPP Woka region congratulated Abu Mehta, Secretary General NDPP Nagaland, for his recent appointment as Associate Vice President of the Athletic Federation of India for the term up to 2024, and Vikali Zimomi, NDPP Nagaland's Women Wing President. Construction work on Dimapur City Shopping Mall and Parking Complex at the New Market has begun again. The project was sanctioned in 2008 by the Centre and construction work on it had begun in 2009, but work stopped halfway. Another company took over the work and in 2019 work started, but the COVID-19 pandemic disrupted it. Now that the lockdown restrictions are being lifted gradually, work on the complex has also begun, although little by little updates stated. The site engineer told Hornbill TV that the construction work will be completed in either February or March next year if work is not disturbed by COVID-19. Actually, this project was started I don't know, way back 2007 or 8, something like that. But that is the, uh, another contractor, not ours. Our work, our company has taken this work uh, from uh, 2019 and it was ordered to uh, uh, the work order is issued to us awarded to us and we have started the work in 2019 and the work actually uh, the work has been started earlier by the previous company and it was hold up and they cannot go for, for uh, further cannot complete the project maybe because of their own reasons i cannot say that why it was uh, stopped the work because of the the contractor has left and do not uh, give the uh, cannot complete it, so the government, the urban development, has uh, retendered the project, and it was awarded the work to us. Earlier, uh, earlier the previous uh, work order cost was something 
12 crores and uh, after the retendering and re evaluation of the work and of uh, the project cost that was awarded to us is uh, 14 crores the project people may think that it was been too low, a very long project we cannot complete it they have not completed the work so far so many years maybe they of course people are right to say all this and ask the question why the project is taking so long my company the golden traders we are doing our best and trying to complete on time before the scheduled time but due to the uh, pandemic we have lost precious two years of course the uh, the construction work is not stopped by the government it was allowed to carry on the work but still then because of the materials and the levers movements the momentum of work is slowed down now we are picking up the momentum because of the unlock and we are planning to complete it as soon as possible maximum works has been already completed by finishing finishing thirds or finishing works maybe prolong up to the next year that is by the end of february or march so safety measures that is the most important part of the uh, construction and as a very busy area, a new market. We are not taking only the uh, safety measure for levers, but for the commoners, because right beneath the, this building, there is a busy market and thousands of people move every day. So we are taking care of that so that no one got hurt or accidentally damaged the properties of, of others also. On August 29, Hornbill TV reported an accident where a youth was injured due to overspeeding on a bike at 7th mile. Due to collision with the road divider, the injured biker was taken to hospital for further treatment, during the course of which he succumbed to his injuries. In this connection, the Jotsoma Youth Organization and friends and families of the deceased have claimed that it was not due to overspeeding, but due to a hit-and-run case. The police have informed that the person involved in the hit-and-run case has been arrested and further investigation is underway. When Hornbill TV tried to speak to police officials, they were not able to comment since the matter is still under investigation. Mobile internet services that were snapped following the demise of former Hura Hariyat leader Said Ali Shah Gilani will now be open in Srinagar and Burgam districts of Jammu and Kashmir. At the time of the filing of this report, news agency said the services will be open by 7 p.m. on Tuesday. Zone Inspector General of Police Vijay Kumar confirmed the information and regretted the inconvenience caused to students in their studies. In a tweet, Kashmir Zone Police wrote that mobile internet will be open in Srinagar and Budgam today by 7 p.m. Said Ali Shah Gilani passed away on September 1st this year. On September 6th, the mobile internet services that were snapped following the demise of Gilani were scheduled to be restored in Kashmir Valley, bearing Srinagar and Budgam districts, said Kashmir Zone Inspector General of Police Vijay Kumar. Earlier on September third the igp said that the situation in the valley has remained peaceful and under control he also thanked the public for their cooperation and assured them that the internet services in the valley will be restored soon three-day assembly session has started in mizoram from tuesday informed an official source assembly secretary h lalrin nauma said that in a recent meeting of the business advisory committee chaired by assembly speaker Lal Rin Liana Silo, a detailed program was chalked out, as per which the session will last for three days till September 9th. According to the official two government bills, the Mizoram Goods and Services Tax Bill 2021 and Mizoram Agricultural Land Leasing Bill 2021 will be tabled during the three-day session. At least 258 start questions have been received by the Assembly Secretariat to be answered during the session. Besides, 227 unstart questions have also been accepted. Anil J. Singh Ghanwat, one of the members of the three-member committee constituted by the Supreme Court on Farm Laws, has written a letter to the Chief Justice of India, Nuthala Pati Venkata Ramana, in his personal capacity, stating that the report of the committee on laws has not yet been released to the public or taken up by the court. The Supreme Court suspended the implementation of three farm laws and constituted a committee to report on these laws on January 12, 2021, Ghanwat stated in his letter. The committee was given two months of time to submit its report and the committee, after consulting a large number of farmers and several stakeholders, submitted its report before the stipulated time on March 19, 2021, Ghanwat said in his letter. 
The committee incorporated the opinions and suggestions of all the stakeholders with the aim of maximum benefits to the farmers. The report has addressed all apprehensions of the farmers. The committee was confident that the recommendations will pave the way to resolve the ongoing farmers' agitation, he said. Ganwat said that he is pained that the issue raised by the farmers has not yet been resolved and the agitation is still continuing. As a member of the committee, especially representing the farmers' community, he is pained that the issues raised by the farmers aren't yet resolved and the agitation is continuing, the letter read. He feels that the report has not been given any attention by the Supreme Court, the letter stated. He requested the Supreme Court to release the report for implementations of its recommendations for peaceful resolution of the stalemate to the farmer's satisfaction at the earliest. The Supreme Court on Tuesday adjourned the hearing and petition seeking a court-monitored probe into the reports of the government allegedly using Israeli software Pegasus to spy on politicians, activists and journalists to September 13th. A bench headed by Chief Justice of India N.V. Ramana adjourned the matter for Monday after Solicitor General Tushar Mehta appearing for center asked for an adjournment. Mehta sought few more days to get instructions on whether the government wanted to file any further affidavit in the matter. The center had on last hearing said that it does not want to file an additional affidavit in the Pegasus issue as national security aspects are involved. Earlier, the bench had issued notice to the center and asked it to respond on a batch of petitions seeking a court-monitored probe into the case. The apex court had said it will decide what to do in future, including whether the government requests for permission to set up a committee of independent experts to examine all aspects should be allowed. That's all for the I. I'm Esther. Keep watching Hornbill TV.